time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems, Remington Rand, who now invites you to play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'd like to introduce the star of the Folie Bergère in Paris, the Café de Paris in London, Macombo in Hollywood, and our dressing room here at the Mansfield Theater, Mr. Fred Allen. Thank you very much. In the February issue of the Carnet magazine, there is a piece called The Lady is a Wit. Now, if you read The Lady is a Wit, you will find that it is a profile of our other glamour panelist, and here she is now, I believe, Miss Arlene Francis. I'm here, Fred. Thank you. And now, backstage, there's a gentleman juggling two oranges and a cup of coffee in preparation for his appearance on the George Goebel show next Saturday night. Mr. Bennett Sir. I was spoken in your best jugular vein. Ooh, oh, Bennett. <laughs> well, speaking of juggling, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great word juggler who is our panel moderator, as you know. He guides or misguides us through the show every Sunday night. And here he is in person, Mr. John Charles Daly. John Thank you, Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. And we're going to do a little juggling tonight. We've juggled a few very interesting occupations, and it's up to the panel to see if they can keep all the balls in the air at the same time. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but I think the best thing to do right now is to get the panel started. Let them... No, you don't have to put your masks on. Oh, Relax. what a Thank relief. You. And let them meet our first <laughs> challenger. Will you sign in, please? Right there. M.A. Palmaro, is that right, sir? From. I mean, will you live here in, in, in New York? In yes. New York City. Yes, that's well, sir. That's right. I didn't want to accuse you. Actually, I come from far away, but I kind of think yeah, of myself New as a New Yorker now. You're a New Yorker now. Good night. Well, that's nice. The panel, I don't think any is entirely strange to you. Perhaps you've seen them around the city, but uh, they want to get a close look at you. So, would you take a small hike over there for me, please, sir? Palmaro? Hello, Mr. Palmaro. All right, Mr. Palmaro, over here, if you will, and sit down next to me. And I need to ask you if you're familiar with our scoring system. Do you know how we score this? Yes, I've been uh, following this uh, game many Sunday evenings. You have? Well, yes. we'll flip a card just for that. <laughs> Get started <laughs> properly. That's a wonderful idea. But, panel, that's charged oh. against the general fund. That's not charged against you all. It's in terms of points. I, I watch it, too, John. How Do you really, Fred? How about another five for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you afterwards. All right. But if you know how we score this thing there, let's let the people at home and those who are here with us in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right. Now I uh, will tell you that Mr. Palmaro is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Palmaro, are your services available to both men and women? Certainly. Oh, well, I like a band that's as sure as you are. And uh, are your services pleasurable for the people that you serve? I would think... Generally so. pleasurable. I would be sure that Mr. Palmaro would like to feel that they give satisfaction or in every case, and in certainly in those he cases... He looks like a gentleman pleasure. that would give satisfaction. Uh, Mr. Palmaro, your wife just applauded. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Palmero, uh, do you have to have some training for the work that you do? 
Yes. Is there any kind of a product involved in your work? No product. No product. One down and nine to go, making it two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Palmer, do you do your work here in New York City? Yes. Is uh, the work bring, does the work bring you in contact with people? Yes. Does it bring you in contact with any people that might be in the public eye? Certainly. Mm. But is that, that is not necessarily a part of the not reason they come. No, I that mean, would be it incidental. Would, hmm? It would happen in the routine of things, Bennett, basically. Do they come to you, Mr. Palmero? Yes, they do. Have you got any kind of a title, like doctor or uh, some special... You mean as a professional man? Yes. Are you a, a professional? Are you a professional man? What does he mean by that? Uh, oh, don't let. <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so either. No, we had a conference and we agreed. Not at all. Two down and eight to go, which makes it three down and seven to go. Miss Kilgallen, Mr. Palmaro is not a doctor. John, I'm going to feel like an absolute fool if I'm not right, but I think I'd better disqualify myself because I think I have reason to know who Mr. Palmaro is. So I'll pass to Fred. Oh, can I have a conference? Miss Kilgallen that, that, feels that she has reason to know who you are. A bell just rang. A bell that? just rang? Didn't hear a thing. Didn't Mr. Know. Allen? <laughs> well, could I have a conference? Who would you like to have a conference with? With Dorothy. <laughs> or with... <laughs> And just before I get my grammar criticized, with whom would you like to have the conference, Mr. Allen? Miss Kilgallen, you can't have one. All right. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? For what? A profit-making organization. No, sir. That's four down and six how to go, Miss Francis. How do you survive? Do you work for any branch of the government? Yes. Do you work for the federal government? I would think, this, you know, this area of employment can get a little bit uh, foggy on occasion. I would say that federal government would cover the general picture, wouldn't Both you? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Do you work in an office? Yes. Do you have anything to do with the great arm of the law? No. 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 Not at all. <laughs> five down, five to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Palmaro, do you have anything to do with people or things that are going in or out of this country? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Would you have anything whatever to do with the passport office? Would you or have anything whatever to do with customs. the passport office? You'd yes, have something yes. to do with the passport yes. office, yes. Uh, are you the man who's in charge of uh, giving passports to people in the United States? Mm, no, I don't. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's have a small conference. There are circumstances under which we would have to agree that uh, Mr. Palmaro would have the authority and the right and uh, might issue a passport, yes. Would it be passports to both United States citizens and people born under foreign flags? Well, I... Uh, it was for a conference, yes. Well, for goodness sake. <laughs> no, no, wouldn't think of it. Absolutely not. Six down and four to go. Miss Kilgallen has passed Mr. Allen. Do you uh, make photographs for passports? <laughs> <laughs> no. Rotogravure photographs. No rotogravure, Fred. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Are you involved in some way with the immigration authorities? No. No, I don't no. think so, no. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. We're back, I'm back at this passport business. Uh, you, you, you said you had something to do with that. Yeah, he has something to do with passports, yeah. Do you, is your signature, does your signature appear anywhere on United States passports? On the United States? Oh, well, sure. Yes, that's right. Yes, 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 sure, yes, yes. yes. Oh, it could. I mean, I would not say that it was absolutely necessary, Bennett, but certainly, here again, it's a broad area, you know, and... Um, well, now, did we establish the fact, I'm not sure whether we established the fact that Mr. Palmero was connected with the United States government. The fact has not been established. Would you like to ask that question? I would like to ask if you are connected with a government other than that of the United States. Oh, other than that of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it one of the, uh, is it one of the Latin countries? One of the Latin countries. Well, that includes well, Italy, Spain. 
<laughs> Take it easy. Oh, do you mean, actually, we want to be helpful here. You mean one of the Latin American countries? No, sir, I do not. Well, what do you mean? I mean, is it either Italy or Spain? Italy or Spain. That's fine. That's nine down and one to go. <laughs> Mr. Elf. Is it uh, Russia? <laughs> Actually, we gave one card away, so that we'll give you one extra question, Miss Francis, if you'd like to ask one. South America? Or South Mexico? America. Isn't that wonderful? Whoa. Uh, no. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Mr. Palmaro is the. Dorothy. Let Dorothy tell us. He must be well, in the consulate somewhere. I huh? thought Mr. Palmero was the consul from Monaco. He, consul general from Monaco. He's right. Yeah, I knew she was there. <laughs> yes, Dorothy. And I'm aware of his name because I think I'll be asking him for a visa in the near future. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, well, actually, we thought we might get one by you, but we didn't get it by you, but we did get it by the rest of the panel. I would like to know something. I have been severely taken to task on my news programs for saying Monaco, which I thought was an anglicization of Monaco, you know? Which is the correct pronunciation? Well, we say Monaco. Monaco. And what do you call the residents of your country? Monegasque. Monegasque. Well, there we are. May I ask a question? Yes, Benny. I wonder if Mr. Palmero is going to get to kiss the bride. <laughs> are you going to get to kiss the bride? I hope so. Ah, <laughs> there's a bad answer I rolled hard. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Palmero. It was That's wonderful great. having you with us on What's My Life. That's one nice thing about being an official. You probably won't have to get in line like the rest of us. <laughs> well, panel, a very uh, difficult beginning for you, but I think probably you'll make up now with our second challenger, because this is not tricky. We're never tricky. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Right there. Thank you. Max Allen McKay. Is that right? <laughs> and I would guess it's Mrs. McKay. Yes. And where are you from, Mrs. McKay? I'm from Bardstown. Bardstown yes, in Kentucky? Kentucky. Oh. Of old Kentucky home. The home of old Kentucky, Kentucky home? home? Well, we got a lot of blue grass over here yes. that I want you to walk through, if you will. Let the panel get a closer look at you. Mrs. McKay. Not at me, ma'am. Hello, Mrs. McKay. I have an uncle who's running a still in your... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. McKay. Mrs. McKay, if you join me here. Are you familiar with our scoring system? Yes. Fine. Will you sit down and make yourself comfortable, get a little close to the microphone, and we'll let the folks at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. All right. Well, trying as always to be helpful, we will tell you that Mrs. McKay is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Mrs. McKay, is there a product involved in what you do? Is there a product involved in what you do? No. No product. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. If there is no product, you must deal in services, Mrs. McKay. Yes. Are your services available for men and for women? Yes. For both? Mm -hmm. Do these people come to you to avail themselves of your... <laughs> they do come to you? Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. <laughs> You no, that's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I must ask that question the wrong way, Jerry. Look at you, Fred. Yeah, it lasts for a half hour going all around. Uh, you don't work for it. No. I'm, I'm finished. I'm, You're, you've had it. I'm extinct. You're I know. extinct. That's uh, right, Miss Francis. I look extinct on the television, too, my friends tell me. Mrs. McKay, uh, would you dress as you are dressed now for your job? I really wouldn't. I mean, w I, by that I mean, would yes. you wear a, a cl uh, clothes such as you have rather than a coverall of some kind? No. no, actually, I think what Mrs. McKay means, Mrs. Okay, McKay would wear like street clothes. Thing. That's right. Yes. So well, that's that's what you, you get a yes, yes answer to that. I see. Yes. Do you work indoors, Mrs. McKay? Yes. Do you work with your hands? Yes. Well, to, some a to a certain extent. Actually, I think we would feel that we ought to give you a no on that. It's not yeah. necessary or vital to the functioning right. of uh, service here. Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. McKay, I know that horses are a very important 
part of Kentucky life. Does your job have anything to do with the world of horses? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Mr. Oh, McKay said I wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Joe Gallup. Bennett, you can hardly work with horses without using your hand. Which might be have something to do with Kentucky Downs and Churchill oh. Downs. Oh, I see what you a mean. A female right. jockey or something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant riding no hands. Uh, do you work in something like a house or an office rather than a building that we, we would associate with sports? This is a hard one, Dorothy. Actually, would you like you me mean... to ask something else? Because I don't know what I'd do if I got a yes. <laughs> All right, you ask something else. Uh, do you speak to the people that you deal with when they come to you? Oh yes, you speak. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Do you give them any words of wisdom or advice? <laughs> Mrs. McKay tries to give them words of wisdom. I think we do all you do. you give words to men and women at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you influence their lives by what you do? <laughs> I try to. I try to. I would say there's some influence there. We would agree that what Mrs. McKay does has some influence or bearing, you know, on the course of life. Do you deal more with adults than with children? Yes. Do you have anything to do with something tremendously important in people's lives? You mean like a milestone of... Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Well, you I'm going to give you one more minute because you're not close, I don't believe. You don't work for uh, any form of the government. That's established, isn't it? No, the, it has been established that uh, Mrs. McKay for... does not work for a profit-making organization, and you may take it from there. Do you, are, are you, are, you, you don't function as a justice of the peace. You don't marry people or anything like that, do you? No, that's six down and four to go. Yet. Oh, you said you don't. That's right. You don't marry mm -hmm. people. You don't divorce people. Then. <laughs> No, you wouldn't have that authority. I don't know. Certain states you might, in the hills back of the underbrush, things going on. Uh, you're not a, a, you don't function in the capacity as a teacher of any sort, mm, in a trailer school or anything These like that. These negative questions are throwing me beautifully. No, yes, Mrs. Well, McKay I, uh, does not. Well, I'll wear you out, John, and I want to <laughs> save you for the rest of the show. I will pass to Arlene. All right, Miss Arlene. Is it possible you do not work for a branch of the government? <laughs> now he's stuck again. <laughs> <laughs> I think... John, one question. Is, has, has Mrs. McKay got anything to do with sports at all? You seem so, uh, you seem so hesitant well, about answering that. I feel a little that. bit unfair because actually I did throw all the cards off and then you got to ask the question... And she doesn't. ...that she doesn't. That's yeah. urgent. That's fine because I'm Mrs. McKay is a jailer. A jailer. A jailer. <laughs> Okay, has been the jailer of the Bardstown Jail since 1950. She succeeded her husband. In this and she left the key? Yeah. <laughs> has the key and knows how to use it, and you better behave, I'll brother Allen. i out of Kentucky. I... Miss Gilgallop? She looks to me as if she'd make them want not to leave. I bet she has no trouble at all. Well, actually, there were a couple of escapees, but they caught, yeah. caught up with them and brought them back to her, and, and they, they stayed that second time. They're not what? breaking in the jail. It's not that attractive, is it? Uh, well, Mrs. In. McKay, we fooled him, and thank you very much for being our guest. It was nice to have you with us on What's My Life. Good night. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends in the panel are blindfolded. Are you all set, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Davis. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. We'll begin it all with Bennett Cerf. 
Well, there was no whistling and more applause after the name was signed than before. Is it correct that you are not in show business? <laughs> I am not. But, ma'am. Miss Kilgallen? For goodness sake, are you in politics? It has a relation to politics. Mr. Allen? What does that mean? Uh... <laughs> It, that it has a relation to politics. Are you in the Republican Party? I am. Miss Francis? If it has a relation to politics, are you appointed rather than elected? I am. Mr. Cerf? Have you anything to do with the Secretary of State in Foreign Affairs? I have something to do with Foreign Affairs. Miss Kilgallen? Are you in the Cabinet? I am. Uh, I think I know your voice, and I'm not going to pass, and I may be wrong, but oh, I would say that you are Senator uh, Lodge. That's right, Fred. You and I come from the same hometown. Yes, sir. Oh, it is. is it right? Right. That's right. Ambassador <laughs> Henry Campbell. I'm so Lodge seldom here. right, I didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't dare take it off. I was afraid of Fred, uh, Mr. Well, he's a Bostonian. He yes, spotted I, my brogue right away. Yes, I, I uh, uh, just the second time around, I heard the, it's quite I recognize the voice. I was just hoping that Fred would confuse your Boston mm -hmm. accent with my inherited Boston accent, but he didn't get confused. <laughs> so well, I'd like to know how the senator got his uh, uh, voice out of his nose. Mine is still up there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it takes years of training. Because actually, uh, all of the panel know, and I'm sure all of you folks at home know, that uh, Ambassador Lodge is our representative to the United Nations. And if I'm not intruding, sir, upon your work hours and not asking questions you don't want to answer, you probably have to deal with our Russian friends in the UN more than anybody else. Is there any formula for getting along with them, or how do you get along with them? Well, every time that a a uh, communist speaks in the United Nations, I make it a point to speak myself. Uh, so that in the news story that goes out over the world, there's always something about the viewpoint of the United States of America. And this that's, is the formula that works. That's, well, that's my formula. <laughs> Actually, I'm not meaning to pin any poses on you in this bright light of publicity, that uh, one of the things that happened when you went to the UN was that the Russians, every time they did get up and spill their propaganda, were met immediately with the United States arguments, and I think it's done a great service for the country. Uh, this is all I had to say, really, about it. Well, that's very nice. Nice Thank of you. you to come and see us. I must tell you one thing, that we were hoping that you'd get into the entertainment side of it and get to say, <laughs> ask the ambassador if he was on television. He was going to say, yes, quite a bit, and he is. He's on the <laughs> U.S. television all the time. Uh, Senator, you know, it is tricky. Uh, we've been playing this game quite a while, and with our blindfolds on, we listen to the applause. And if there's a lot of applause after you've signed in, more than when you have signed in, that usually means that somebody in the audience doesn't readily recognize. And that's how we went on. That helps a lot, Miss Kilgallen? Doesn't help me a bit. I thought from the applause and the quality and the kind of applause that it was a very curvaceous girl like Julie London. Thank you very much, Thank Jeff, you. for being our guest. I have a quick question. I'd like a quick answer. Have I still got my voice up in my nose, too? Uh, partly, John. And Thank you me? very much, Mr. Allen. Everybody comes from Boston. No, I come from New York. Well, we'll Would be back really? in just a moment. Well, as you've all heard earlier, Bennett Seth is going to be away from us a couple of weeks. He's going out to California. We'll be with George Goble next Saturday. So I would like to ask Bennett for all of us to say our, our greetings to uh, Mr. Goble, a very fine gentleman. Until next week, then, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, Fred. Bye-bye, uh, Bennett. Good night, uh, Dorothy. Uh, good night, uh, Arlene, and bye-bye, Bennett. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Fred. <laughs> and bye-bye, baby. <laughs> well, next week, while I'm fooling around in California, Mr. Herman Wolf, the brilliant author of Marjorie Morningstar, will be sitting in the seat. And don't you flirt with him, Arlene. Okay. Good night, John. <laughs> good night, Bennett. Have a good trip. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life? There are 21 reasons.